What's going on YouTube? Back here with another video today. In today's video, I got some really cool stuff for you guys. We're gonna be going over the last piece that I picked up for the lightning build. This is the last piece to the puzzle and a really, really cool piece. It's got a lot of special history to it. So we're gonna be going over that as well as installing a coolant crossover mod. If you guys don't know, a coolant crossover mod is super important for these trucks and mod motors like the Cobras and stuff like that. It's a very popular thing to do. I'm going to be going over everything you need to know about the coolant crossover mod and the last piece of the puzzle for the lightning. So let's go ahead and jump into this video, guys. All right. So we're going to start with what we picked up. This is a lower turkey pan or intake manifold for the 01 to 03 lightnings. But this one is really special. This has been heavily modified. I'm going to walk you through everything that's been done to this one. This is the same lower intake manifold that was on Neil Otis's record holding truck. It is the record for the Ford Lightnings with the Eaton blower. And he has heavily modified this thing. I'm super happy I was able to get this from him. So as you can see, it's been heavily ported. You can see all the, the port marks still a little bit. This is all heavily ported, all the runners. I'll flip it over and show you the other side with the gasket on it, but it's all gasket matched and super ported out. Um, he welded this flange in the bottom. I don't know how well you guys can see or the camera's doing that any justice, but there is a wedge that he made in the bottom, all welded in, smoothed out, polished up. And what this does is this helps direct airflow into the runners. When the air comes through the intercooler, hits that flat surface on the bottom, kind of gets scattered around and is pretty turbulent as it makes its way up into the runners. This helps guide the air up and into the runners. And supposedly that makes a pretty decent difference. And you can see he also kind of curved the surfaces down here. So it's just a straight, nice curved transition up into the runners. So that helps just direct airflow, make it a little less chaotic and kind of guide it to where it needs to go. Super, super cool. He did a really good job with that too. You can barely see where he welded that in. He smoothed out all the wells and made it all nice. So that's pretty cool. And I mean, you can just see all the work he put into his builds, like every little bit matters. Um, this black coating on the outside is not just regular paint. This is what's called thermal displacement coating. And what that does is help helps basically even out the heat so there's no hot spots and helps get rid of it. It basically radiates heat out of the metal and into the air around it. So. That's pretty cool. It's a special coating. So unfortunately, I can't really touch it up, make it look super pretty, because in order to do that with this coating, you have to strip all this coating off, basically redo it. It's a one shot deal. You don't do multiple coats or anything. It's a super special coating that you just can't touch up. So it is what it is as far as how it looks. It's not the prettiest because it's you know been used over the years, but it's gonna have to do. I didn't wanna mess with it and paint over it or anything and ruin the thermal property. So we're just gonna leave it as is. Um, let me go ahead and flip this thing over. All right, so we got it flipped over. We'll start with the obvious, this big chunk of thing that he added to the bottom. Um, it's kind of covered up, but you can kind of see it there where he welded. This is a extra thing he added to the bottom. A normal turkey pan would have ended right here. But he added this extra tank, reservoir, bladder, whatever you want to call it, basically to run coolant through it to cool down your intake temperatures even more. So basically what he did, this is on the bottom, this sits in the valley of the motor. You can see his little inlets there and he's got an outlet on the other side. He ran hoses with coolant through here to basically help chill the intake temperatures down a little bit. Um, this is basically wrapped in that heat reflective tape. That way it reflects the heat and kind of insulates the, in, insulates the bottom there. That way the heat from the motor doesn't heat that up. And he ran coolant through there and that's a pretty neat idea. I'm not sure if I'm going to use that portion. He said he didn't really notice a huge difference in temperature when he did it. And all it does is create another, you know, possible leak point. So he probably wouldn't do it. But what I was thinking about doing is maybe doing a separate system. I mean, like the intercooler system, for example, maybe just running ice water through there, get an extra tank, an extra pump, and basically have this on its own system with some ice water. I don't know yet. 
Um, I don't know if I'm gonna get that far into this, but it's there if I wanna use it, so that's super cool. And it's all insulated with the heat reflective tape. Um, yeah, su super cool idea he had. He had all kinds of cool ideas and he tried just about everything to see what made a difference. Um, it's got these phenolic spacers, which I am gonna keep on there. Basically what these do is this is where it mounts to the head. And what these do is these help prevent the heat transfer from the head to this intake manifold because metal on metal will transfer heat. So instead what you do is he's got this half inch phenolic spacer, it's G10 phenolic. It's basically like a plastic kind of. And plastic against metal, this insulates. So that it keeps all the heat from the motor away from the intake manifold essentially. Now you're still gonna get heat from the engine bay and the heat around it in the air but you will not be getting that metal to metal heat transfer that you would if you didn't have these spacers. So another cool little touch. Um, you can see how ported these runners are. I mean, he ported the heck out of these things. I will post a picture of one that's not ported versus this one. And you can see he opened these up a lot. Here's the gaskets here. So you can see how gasket matched it is. And you can just see all this here where this hole is would not be here basically it'd be just right here but he opened all that up nice curved matched and smoothed so this should be a pretty cool little piece to the puzzle and this should pick up you know even if we get 10 horsepower out of it that's 10 horsepower we didn't have before and when you're going for records or trying to push the limits of things you have to do everything you can so just really, really cool piece. I mean, I'm super happy that we were able to pick this up just because of the history behind it and all the, I mean, you can see how custom he went with just about everything he did. And it's just super, super cool that we were able to get it. Um, I've always appreciated everything he's done with his build and his truck. And it's crazy the lengths he went to to set the record that he set. Super, super cool. I'm gonna do a deep dive on his truck in a future video going through all the other stuff he's done. This is just the tip of the iceberg. He's done so much custom stuff to his truck. It, it's crazy, insane. But that's what you gotta do when you're looking for records. But anyways, guys, so that's the intake manifold that we picked up. It's gonna be a really cool piece to the puzzle for this truck because of how custom and different it is. No one else is gonna have one like this. So that's super cool to have on my build. And then that's gonna be able to allow me to use the stock one we have in the Lightning for the four x four build that we're doing. If you don't know, we're gonna take all the stock stuff off the Lightning and move it to the four x four that we have out there. It's just the FX4, same year actually, it's a 03 FX4. It's got the 5.4 Triton and we're gonna take all the stock Lightning stuff and basically make that a four x four Lightning. So that should be cool too and some more content for you guys, so be excited to get this done get going on that but anyways for now let's just focus on the task at hand we are actually going to be starting the trinity tvs swap today not in this video to be in your guys's next video but i am going to be starting taking shit apart today so that'd be pretty cool but anyways the second half of this video we're going to be installing this cool and crossover mod so this video is officially brought to you by hose hustler you can check him out he does all kinds of custom hoses I have a bunch of his stuff already on the truck. As you can see, I don't have the hard line for the intercooler here because I have his set of custom intercooler hoses. They run down nice and stealthy right there underneath the fender and underneath the accumulator and into the intercooler. Super nice, clears up a ton of room right here as well as his heater hose reroute. You can see I don't have the heater hoses here because he also makes a heater hose delete but it's really a reroute and it reroutes your heater hoses nice and close to the firewall so they're out of the way and not seen makes plug changes a lot easier so those are some those are just some of the stuff i have he makes all kinds of different hose kits make sure you go check him out for any of your hose needs anything custom hose wise he makes really cool kits and this is one of them this is the coolant crossover mod you can see all nice and fittings Everything's pre-terminated, ready to go. Pretty much everything you need is supplied and it's super plug and play, nice and easy. Um, for example, with the intercooler hoses, everything came with the ends labeled to where it went, how it went, everything, real nice. So, makes super cool kits. So make sure you guys go check them out. 
I'll put links in the description. It's Hose Hustler on Facebook. Makes really cool stuff. Um, today, we're gonna be using his coolant crossover mod, like I said. Basically, what this mod does is this helps bring coolant to the other side of the heads because by design from Ford, it doesn't do that. Basically, your coolant comes in through this side, has the flow through all the passages, whatever, to get to the driver's side. It doesn't have direct access to the driver's side. So, the driver's side rear cylinders are notorious for getting a little hotter than the rest. Um, so what this does, this helps basically get coolant right to the driver's side. That way you don't have that issue. Um, super easy mod to do. All you're gonna have to do is basically you'll have to tap, you have to drill and tap your lower intake manifold and it requires a little bit of grinding on this little ear here. You can see how my tap was hitting a little bit, but mine was already done. So unfortunately I can't show you guys that exact process, but it is pretty simple. Um, comes with instructions with what you'll need I believe it's a 23, 30 seconds drill that you'll need to drill the hole and drill over here and then a half by 14 tap. So a half 14 pipe tap and it's pretty easy, it's simple. Just drill it from the bottom, tap it from the top, that way your fittings screw in and that's it. So we're gonna be go ahead and installing this. It's pretty simple. Um, basically the only other thing you're gonna need is some high temp thread sealant that's what I like to use or just some Teflon tape for the pipe tap threads or for the pipe fitting threads all right so I got everything mocked up this is all just dry fit nothing's tightened down yet um, I just kind of want to show you guys how it went as you can see there's a short fitting and that goes on the side that is gonna be your passenger side this is in there just like it would be in the truck so passenger side and you can kind of tell because this side already has a flange that sticks pretty far up. The driver's side does not, so therefore you'll need the longer fitting. That way it's at the same height. So, I mean, it's pretty easy to know how this goes together, honestly. Um, those pipe threads will require either Teflon tape or thread sealant. I'm gonna do thread sealant. And fittings do not require that because what they do is they seal on this taper. You can see how the fitting is tapered. The inside of this fitting is also tapered and that's how that seals. If anything, you just wanna put a dab of lube on those, tighten those up, and that's pretty much it. So thread sealant or Teflon tape on these pipe threads. On the and fittings, all you need to do is a little bit of lube and tighten those up, and that's how it's gonna go. Um, pretty simple, like I said, and like I said, what this does is it just allows coolant to flow evenly through the heads, eliminates that driver's side hot area that it always gets on these trucks. It's a really good mod to do. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this stuff down so it's all done. All right, and there you have it. Everything's all tightened down and installed. For the lube, I just used some Earl's assembly lube. I also bought this for the fuel system that we're gonna be piecing together. Basically makes hose ends installation really easy. And it's just an assembly lube. Um, that's what I chose to use. You can use just a dab of oil would be fine. Any oil you have laying around, just put a dab on the threads, tighten everything down. Like I said, thread sealant. On the two fittings that are pipe threads, all the rest are and fittings. Don't need any thread sealant, just a little bit of lube, a little bit of oil. Um, you will need some big wrenches. I didn't even have a wrench big enough, so I actually had to use an adjustable. I know, super cringy, but I was super careful and I was able to do it without scuffing up all my fittings. You can see they stayed pretty nice. All right, something else you're gonna have to do. Yes, this is an afterthought. I've already finished this video. Went in there to edit it and said, dang, I can't believe I forgot to mention that. Um, you can see, since this is raised up, you got plenty of thread engagement. On this area here, since it's down in that little divot, the area is pretty thin where you have actual thread engagement. So you can have possible leaks on this side and what a lot of people do is have this welded afterwards. You can take it to any welding shop and they should be able to weld that for you, no problem. Or you can even just do, and this is what I'm gonna do, is some JB weld. Just JB weld it yourself. You can get the putty, you can get the paste, whatever you want, and just weld around that fitting so it doesn't leak. Um, I was thinking about just using RTV 
I'm not gonna have as much of an issue as most because of these spacers allow me to have a little more thread engagement because I did tap into these spacers a little bit. So my threads go pretty far down. Um, most people probably won't be able to do that. So you will have very little thread engagement there and you're gonna have to do something about that. Either take it to a shop and have it welded. That'd be the cleanest way to go probably. Like I said, you can use JB Weld. That'd be another permanent clean solution. You can basically just fill this whole divot with JB Weld here. Just fill this little pocket and be done with it. Um, but keep in mind, if you do that, this fitting will never come out again. That's gonna be a pain in the ass to get out if you ever have to. I don't know why you'd ever have to get it out. Even if you deleted the coolant crossover mod, you could just leave that like it is. It wouldn't be a real big deal. Um, or for a less permanent solution, you could try some Blackheart TV. That might be what I do just because, I don't know, I don't really like committing to permanent solutions like JB Weld. So I might just do some RTV, but that is something you're gonna have to address. It may or may not be a problem. A lot of people just weld it and just to be done with it. But like I said, this fitting will be permanent at that point. Not a big deal though, because I mean, I don't see why you'd ever have to either get rid of the whole thing, or if you did get rid of it, you could just keep that fitting right there where it is, wouldn't make a big difference. So either way, it'd be fine. Um, so yeah, just wanted to bring that up. Make sure you address that. Other than that, you should be good to go and it's gonna make an improvement in cooling for your heads. So that's pretty much it. Um, that's gonna do the trick on distributing the coolant better throughout the heads. And that's gonna finish up our lower intake manifold. Um, like I said, I am going to be disassembling today in your next video, but today. Um, my goal is today to have the blower off, all this stuff off, and basically pull the lower intake manifold and put our new one on, bolt that down, and then just cover it up for now. Because after that's bolted down and everything's out of the way, we're gonna start on our custom fuel system. Um, some common questions I just predict getting on this. No, you cannot do this with it on the truck. You do not want to tap those holes from, you don't want to drill those holes from the top for one. And for two, you don't want to do that while it's on the truck and get all them shavings into your coolant passages. So this does require you to pull the intake manifold off of your truck first. Um, the video of us disassembling the lightning, the next video guys you guys are gonna get would be a good guide to go off of. I'm basically gonna show the disassembly process. It's pretty easy, honestly, just unbolt stuff, take it off, remember where it goes, take pictures if you have to, super easy. But yes, you have to pull your intake manifold to do the coolant cross crossover mod, very important to do. So wait till the next video, you guys will see the disassembly process. So make sure you stay tuned. If you're not subscribed, do so now. Hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss any videos. You're not gonna wanna miss the videos coming up. Trust me, guys. But that is gonna be it for today's video. So make sure you also drop a like on this video. Make sure you hit that thumbs up on the videos that you're watching. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Have you done this mod yet? Have you done it, but maybe don't have the hose hustler hoses on your truck? may be worth redoing because they are really nice hoses but let me know down below guys stay tuned to the next video and we'll see you later